So hybridity takes on a kind of political cachet um, that positions itself in opposition to notions of purity in particular. I think hybridity has um, traditionally been associated with the monstrous. And what it means for subjectivity, of course, is that the, the subject is not seen as a unified or autonomous being, but the subject, literally in her case, is composed of many different subjectivities. And she has passages in that text where she relates this not only to the special case of uh, the female monster, but more generally to the mixed biological inheritance of humans. For most, most people in the contemporary world, we experience nature through the technological. And so I think it's no longer possible to distinguish a nature for us that is removed from technology. Technology interpenetrates the natural at every point, more and more so. If you had no technology and you were a human, you would be in an extremely unusual, an aberrant state compared to most of humanity. So. In that sense, too, technological uh, devices are not foreign to us, they're part of our nature. Narrative is pervasive and it's essential to meaning making. It's one of the important ways that we make meaning, not just in fiction or literature that we read, but in everyday discourse and everyday lives. If you have hybrid fragmented subjects, then it doesn't make sense that you can corral all of these hybrid creatures that are serving as characters into one big story. It will break up into many stories. This is a term that uh, was coined by Talon Mehmet in his work, Lexia to Perplexia, where he coins a neologism, communification which seems to me to put together commodification and communication. So we carry in our bodies this sedimented history and um, always I think there's a uh, conflict and a negotiation between our evolutionary history, our biology, and the forces of culture including technology. We think that words and ideas make a difference in the world and in fact construct our world.